Africa's ecosystem is possibly the most competitive ecosystem of all the continents, as it's home to a variety of the largest land animals on this planet, and it's also home to some of the largest predators. To be successful in Africa, you need to be able to avoid these predators, and you also need to be able to find food in some of Africa's harshest environments. Because the majority of animals in Africa need to be very hardy and well adapted, you could assume that if they were introduced into other continents they would take over. In today's video I will be looking at just a few African animals that I think would do well in other continents, and the continent I will be focusing on is Europe. I have done a few other videos on this topic, but this episode is quite complicated, as there is quite a big contrast between the climate of Africa and the climate of Europe. I will mostly be focusing on African animals that could do well in Southern Europe. The Southern European countries are some of the only European countries that have the climate to sustain most African animals, and this is why I will be focusing mainly on these countries today. Without further ado, we can look at our first African animal, and this animal is the honey badger. The honey badger also goes by the name of the ratel, and it is the only living species in its genus. Despite being called a badger, it does not closely resemble other badger species, and instead it has more in common with weasels. Even though the honey badger is mostly seen as an African animal, it can also be found over large parts of the Middle East and Asia. The honey badger is a relatively small creature by African standards, as they have a body length of around 77 centimeters, and they stand at around 28 centimeters at the shoulder. Even though this size may not seem very impressive at first, this makes them the largest terrestrial mustelid in Africa, and they're also one of the fiercest animals on the continent. In Africa, there are plenty of predators that are capable of taking down a honey badger, but in most cases, they tend to avoid them. This is because honey badgers can be extremely aggressive, and they can hold their own against most predators if they need to. As well as being very combative and aggressive, honey badgers are also very hard for most predators to kill. They have a thick layer of skin, and this skin is also very loose. When the honey badger is captured by a predator, they can easily swivel around and bite them, and they also have a resistance to many snake venoms. Honey badgers have also proven to be very smart, and they have great problem-solving abilities, and Stoffel is a great example of this. Stoffel was a captive honey badger in South Africa, and no matter how many times he was caged, he always found a way out. These abilities are just some of the many reasons why I think honey badgers would be successful in Europe, and I think they could be the masters of quite a few different habitats. The honey badger's most valuable ability is its adaptability. It currently has a very extensive distribution, and it can be found across many different habitats. In these areas, they have a very broad diet, and they'll feed on pretty much anything they can find. The honey badger has the least specialised diet of the weasel family next to the wolverine, as it will feed on reptiles such as turtles, tortoises, lizards and snakes, and they'll go after mammals such as rodents and livestock, and they also consume quite a lot of plant matter too. This shows us that they can find food in pretty much any healthy ecosystem, and this includes southern Europe. They do very well hunting some of Europe's native snakes, and they could also take advantage of ground nesting birds, and the abundance of small rodents. As honey badgers are so feisty, most predators would learn to leave them alone, but some wolves and bears may try their luck. As the honey badgers are so intelligent, I think they could do well in both urban areas and wild areas, as they could take advantage of the food that we leave behind and they would also be great at hunting livestock. They could easily fend off the red fox that plays a similar role in the European ecosystem, and really, in some areas, I think they would be unstoppable. The next African animal we will be taking a look at is a bit of a wild card, but I think it will spark quite an interesting conversation in the comments. The next animal we will be taking a look at is the hippopotamus, and this species is famously one of the largest land animals on this planet. The hippopotamus is a semi-aquatic mammal native to sub-Saharan Africa, and this creature is known for being very dangerous. They are one of the most deadly creatures in Africa, and they kill at least 500 people a year. Most hippo attacks happen in the water, and this is where they can be extremely aggressive and territorial. They often charge and attack boats, and as they are so large, it's easy for them to capsize them. 
Very few predators will try to attack and kill an adult hippo, but the young are at risk to some predators. Crocodiles, lions and hyenas are known to go after them, but they do this at their own risk. Hippos are known to be aggressive towards all of these predators, and if they make a wrong move, it will be the last thing that they ever do. The question of if hippos can actually survive in Europe is quite an interesting one, because really it's got little to do with other animals. No predator in Europe could realistically challenge these beasts, and as they are herbivores, they don't rely on any other animals for food. The question is if these hippos would have enough suitable habitat in Europe, and if they would have enough plants to eat. There are quite a few wetlands across Europe that could sustain hippos, and surprisingly there is also enough food. Hippos mostly relax in the water during the day, and they leave the water at night to forage on land. In the wild, their diet almost entirely consists of grass, and of course grass isn't very hard to find in Europe. For some, it may be strange to think of a hippo population outside of Africa, but in South America, the hippo is already an invasive species. Famously, Pablo Escobar kept some pet hippopotamuses in the late 1970s, and after his death, some of these hippos were released into the wild. This hippo population soon multiplied, and by 2019 there were a few hundred individuals. These hippos have harmed both the native flora and fauna in the area, and the Colombian government are trying to come up with an ethical way to deal with them. This shows us that hippos can cause problems outside of their native range, and they could be just as successful in Europe. Thankfully, it's almost impossible that this would ever happen, and this is good news for both the native species and also the people of southern Europe. The final African creature we will be taking a look at is the African civet. This cat-like creature is native to sub-Saharan Africa, and it's widely distributed in woodlands and secondary forests. This species spends most of the day sleeping in dense vegetation, but it comes out at night to look for food. The African civet is a medium-sized mammal, as it can have a head and body length of up to 84 centimeters, and it has a maximum weight of around 20 kilograms. This size means that it can overpower some smaller creatures, but just like the honey badger, this species has quite a broad diet. It will feed on a wide range of rodents, amphibians and reptiles, and they'll also feed on fruits and grasses. This diet helps them to be very adaptable creatures, and this adaptability could help them to be successful in Europe. You could argue that the African civet is in the same ecological niche as a raccoon or a red fox, and these two species do very well in Europe. The red fox is one of the most successful creatures in the northern hemisphere, and the raccoon has a large invasive population in central Europe. Of course, the African civet would have to compete with creatures such as these, and it could also be predated on by wolves, bears, and lynx. As the African civet is strictly nocturnal, it could avoid some of these predators, and it could also avoid them by focusing on more urban environments. The African civet is quite an elusive and cunning creature, and I think it has the skill to take over some European ecosystems. Of course, these are just my opinions, and you're free to let me know what you think in the comments down below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.